In this video we are going to take a second look at one of the beefy Gravis units available to the Indometer kill team, the Aggressors. As of late, they have been celebrating a strong combat, even though their datasheet itself did not change. How is that even possible? First, we will take a quick look at their datasheet and why they were struggling early in 9th edition. Then we will go through what exactly changed in order to make them more competitive in Deathwatch and how we can make best use of those changes. Lastly, there will be some modeling recommendations and a quick wrap up. This release is an update to the Aggressor's review edit back in April 2021. Seeing that this unit has pretty much gone full circle in the Death Watch since the release of the supplement. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Rocking the Toughness 5 and 3 Wounds Gravis profile, what stands out on the aggressors when compared to the other Gravis data sheets is that they come with 3 base attacks, already hinting at them being the one Gravis unit that can actually pack a punch in close combat. And indeed, independently of their ranged loadout, the aggressors gauntlets share the same profile as the firstborn Terminators in famous Power Fists. For their ranged loadout, they can either be equipped with Flamestorm Gauntlets or Boltstorm Gauntlets and a Fragstorm Grenade Launcher, with the latter adding an additional 5 points to their total cost. Overall, point per point, both loadouts are viable for their intended purposes. When compared to 8th edition, the aggressors have lost their infamous Firestorm ability, which allowed them to double shoot if they did not move. For keywords, the most notable ones are Core, Primaris and Gravis, with the latter two giving them access to popular stratagems like Transhuman, Chin Rod Might and Unyielding in the face of the foe. As I was saying back in my original review of the aggressors, in a regular Space Marine army, this puts them in a position where they no longer overperform, but they aren't exactly bad either. As with all units in the Elite slot, they face a lot of competition, especially now in 9th edition with boosted van wets, terminators and dreadnoughts. For the Death Watch, however, the situation becomes far more interesting due to the potential inclusion of aggressors in the Indometer kill team and less competition in the elite slots due to kill teams counting as troops. For detailed information on how to build an Indometer kill team and how to maximize its advantages, check out my guide linked in the description. For the purposes of this video, I will instead focus on why aggressors were overlooked even in the Death Watch for many months. Overall, I think it was a combination of the following. Aggressors losing double shooting, the Deathwatch supplement reorganizing kill teams according to armor types, as well as heavy intercessors, the default tax of the Indometer kill team, having been made available only several months after the release of the Space Marine Codex. Looking back, it took quite a while for the Indometer kill teams to show up in competitive play and when they did, they would contain either the hyped Eradicators or the devastating Plasma Inceptors prior to their points increase. Aggressors just couldn't compete in that kind of environment. Looking back, there was a brief moment after the Plasma Inceptor's points increase back in January 2021, when basically running 5 of them became very costly and the Admec Codex release in May 2021. During that time, you could run a mixed unit style Indometer kill team with 2-3 Flamestorm Aggressors, 3-2 Plasma Inceptors and the Heavy Intercessors. Supported by multiple defensive layers, Dominus Sieges, Deathwatch Librarian Powers and an Apothecary, this was a powerful midboard bully unit that was immensely difficult to shift, no small thanks to the Flamestorm Aggressor's punishing charge attempts with Overwatch and or their Power Fist's equivalents. This kind of setup became most famous in Deathwatch SH's firewall list though it never made the big international breakthrough in competitive play. Then of course came Admech, 
which could blast even the indometer brick off the table, and later the Deathwatch meta moved on to Dreadnought spam, both the indometer and the Grassers in particular disappeared from competitive play for many months. Ultimately, it was the release of our army of renown, the Kill Team Strike Force, that did not only allow Deathwatch to remain somewhat competitive among a struggling Space Marine faction, but also brought the Grassers back on the table. How so? The answer is of course the Specialism Extremist Stratagem, unique to the Army of Renown, as well as their ability to select a different chapter tactics army-wide for a turn. For those not familiar with these rules, I recommend checking out my full review, the link is in the description. In short, the Specialism Extremist Stratagem allows a unit to auto-wound its target, for a costly 3 CP, meaning that in order to get the most out of this, you want to drown your opponent with volume of fire or close combat attacks. For the former, an Indometer kill team with the mandatory heavy intercessors equipped with Hellstorm bolt rifles, as well as bolt storm aggressors is perfect for this. To get a bit more overall flexibility, most competitive lists have moved to a 5 heavy intercessors, 4 bolt storm aggressors, 1 bolter interceptor combo, but the key to running this successfully are still the aggressors. What then further benefits such a kill team is the access to chapter tactics like Imperial or Crimson Fists, from zeros to heroes. For more information on the latest competitive army of renown lists, feel free to check out my tournament coverage linked in the description. Having said that, how would I go about aggressors in the Death Watch these days? As far as I'm concerned, what remains unchanged is that they should always be included as part of the Indometer kill team, but what I would now also suggest is playing them in the Army of Renown, where the Ballstorm aggressors can truly shine. What about Flamestorm Aggressors? The issue here is that there is an ongoing rules debate about whether auto-hitting flamers work with the stratagem or not. Currently, the US and UK for instance have different rulings on this. Regardless of that, even in case that flamers were ruled to work, I would most likely want to keep the Indometer kill team with the extra range and reliable shot count, while dedicating a Costello-style Proteus kill team to some close combat action. For more information on the Costello-style Proteus kill team, feel free to check my video linked in the description. Having said that, I would still recommend magnetizing the aggressors, to which we will get in just a moment. But first, how many aggressors would I recommend getting these days? Personally, I think that 6 aka 2 boxes of 3 are enough. This ensures that you can run a single indometer kill team with either 4 or 5, and should things change again in the future, you'll have enough models to perhaps run 2 firewall style mixed units again. A while ago, one of my viewers asked me how would I rate the Deathwatch Combat Patrol now that aggressors are more desirable, which I thought was an excellent question. My answer was basically that I would decide based on my number of intercessors. I still don't like that the box comes with 10, but if you have none for your Deathwatch yet, then the Combat Patrol is indeed very attractive nowadays. Then finally, as previously mentioned, I recommend magnetizing the weapons on the aggressors, as both loadouts are viable options, with the flamers likely to get a comeback. Somewhat surprisingly, magnetizing turns out to be easier than expected. As illustrated on the picture, the weapon part of the gauntlets, as well as the cables running to the backpack can be assembled separately. The box includes separate pieces for both loadouts. The arm part is permanently attached to the model. While it is theoretically possible to just attach the weapon part of the gauntlets to the model without any glue and then exchange them as needed, I prefer to secure them more firmly with the help of magnets. This is simply as an extra precaution to not have them fall off when moving the models. In order to do this, I filled the part of the gauntlet attached to the model with a bit of green stuff, then inserted the magnet and secured it with super glue. On the weapon specific part of the gauntlet, I inserted the magnet with the help of a drill. This is no different than the standard approach for magnetizing weapons on models. Last but not least, the Fragstorm grenade launcher on top of the backpack 
can also be secured with the help of a magnet. This works very similar to the Cyclone missile launcher on the Terminators, in case you have some experience with magnetizing those. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have taken a second look at the aggressors in an attempt to find out why they are celebrating their comeback in the Death Watch. Rocking the solid Gravis stats, they have both decent shooting and close combat capabilities, though the former has been reined in for 9th edition by removing their ability to double shoot when not moving. This combined with the hyped eradicators and boosted plasma inceptors early into 9th edition resulted in them being overlooked. While they had a brief appearance in a mixed unit style of Indometer kill team, they were soon entirely replaced by the Dreadnought spam meta. It wasn't until the release of our Army of Renown, the Kill Team Strike Force, that they are now seeing a comeback in the Indometer Kill Team by combining their volume of fire with the unique auto wounding stratagem or army wide access to different chapter tactics. Most competitive lists nowadays include 4 to 5 aggressors, meaning that getting a total of 6 through 2 boxes of 3 will suffice. In case you are also looking for intercessor models, the Deathwatch Combat Patrol could be an interesting deal. Regardless of the Boltstorm variant currently dominating the meta, I would recommend magnetizing them, as both profiles are viable and the Specialism Extremist Stratagem is still pending final rules clarification from GW. All in all, if you were thinking about putting some aggressors on the table, now is the perfect time to do so in the Deathwatch. So that's it for the aggressors in the Death Watch. Are you guys running these yourself? Or are you planning to bring them back into your lists? Any success stories with the Indometer Kill Team and Specialism Extremis? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.